<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all if you have a PlayStation 3, any model system on 4.85 firmware or lower, how you can install PS3 in. Now to get a few things out of the way, First of all, it does not matter what firmware you're on as long as you are on firmware 4.85 or lower. And if you're on a lower firmware, we're going to update you to a hybrid version of 4.85, which will be covered here. This is also not a jailbreak, meaning that we are not going to be installing custom firmware, but this is pretty close. There's a lot of features that are available in PS3 HIN, which you can also do in custom firmware. So really, if you want custom firmware, but you do not have a capable system, such as a PS3 Super Slim, then this will work for you pretty well. Finally, this is also different from HAN. Now, you can have HAN on your system, or you don't need to have it, and PS3 HIN actually has HAN capabilities built into it, but I'm going to really be focusing here on PS3 HIN, just due to the fact that this, in my opinion, is the much better option if you do not want to install custom firmware or if you cannot install custom firmware. So in my opinion, there's not much of a need to stay on HAN exclusively. Just go ahead and go with HIN, whether you already have HAN installed or not. So first of all, we're going to need a few things. We're going to need a USB flash drive, our PlayStation 3 system. I'd also recommend keeping a mini USB cable on hand because we are going to need to go into recovery mode. And we're of course going to need a PC to transfer some files so you need your internet connection. So with all that said, let's go ahead, take our flash drive and move over to the PC. Down below in the description, I'm going to have links to the websites I'm going to be using here. But first of all, you want to go to the PS3 exploit site. Again, this will be linked down below in the description. And when you go here, there are going to be some alerts which you can read. These do change quite regularly, so they might be different by the time you're watching this video, but this is just covering that 4.85 has been released, well, HFW. And here is another warning that you all will need to know. It says here, do not under any circumstances enable factory service mode or install CC API on a PS3 with PS3 HIN. It will also be installing the HFW twice on here. Now, the reason why this is really important is because this can brick your PS3, and I have seen many people do it who completely disregard this warning. So you have been warned, do not play around with your system if you're doing this with factory service mode or install CC API on here. So we can press OK. Now, once you have the page loaded, we will need to download 4.85 HFW. That's a hybrid firmware. This is going to allow us to run the exploits to utilize HIN on here. So you can scroll down and it is here, 4.85 HFW. Click this page and it will bring you to this post here or wherever it's going to bring you where you can find the download. This one is on PSX Place. All you need to do is go find the download link, which is right here in a mega link. Once the mega link loads in, just click the download button and begin downloading the zip. Save the zip file somewhere you can easily access it. For this, I'm going to be saving it to my PS3 folder that I created on my desktop. Next up, we're also going to need some homebrew because that's going to be the point of homebrew enabler, where this will let us play game backup loaders, homebrew games, homebrew applications, emulators, all that fun stuff. So I'm actually going to have a link to the homebrew page here, but the first piece of homebrew I normally recommend and what I like to install is Multiman. So even though this says 4.84 HIN, this will work, and I recommend getting the unofficial Multiman for HIN. So you can just find this and click on download. This will save as a PKG file and you can just save it anywhere on your desktop. If you'd like to download any of these other homebrews, you're more than welcome to. Some of them might or might not work. PS3 HIN does work pretty well with homebrew, but some which does not work, you might just need to resign to 3.55. So I'd recommend checking this out if you want to grab any other homebrew you can, but now that we have a piece of homebrew and 4.85 HFW, let's continue on. In order to make sure this works, we do need to have our flash drive formatted to FAT32. So if you have anything important on this flash drive, make sure you back it up. Once it's backed up, you can right click, format, select FAT32, and we can just do a quick format with no issue. So you can press OK and close on there. Over at your downloads, take whatever homebrew you downloaded, copy it, 
and paste it into the root of your flash drive like so. For HFW, because this is a zip file, make sure you right click it and extract it. And then inside of the folder that you create, when you extract it to a folder, there's going to be a folder here with a MD5 hash and of course your update file. One thing to note is that we do need to rename this to ensure you have the most accuracy. Make sure you go to view and check file name extensions. So if you're not seeing any file names on here, you might not have that checked, but just make sure that you have it checked on your OS that you are using this for. Either way, we can right click and copy this, go over to our flash drive, and in the root of it, create a folder called PS3, all uppercase, and inside the PS3 folder, create another folder called update, all uppercase, and then inside of here, you can paste the HFW update file. Just give it a few seconds to copy over. Now what you need to do is rename this. So you just need to reduce this down to ps 3 updatepup And the very last thing I'd recommend doing before we move back to the PS3 is to make sure that this update file has downloaded successfully. So what we're going to do is MD5 check this file. For this, you can go back over to your download and where you have this empty folder, you can just click on it like that. Make sure you copy out the folder name itself because that is the MD5 file. And then we're going to check the file that is on the flash drive to make sure it downloaded and copied successfully. This is to ensure that there is no corruption on the firmware file itself. For this, you can use any MD5 checking program or tool. I have been preferring to use this online MD5 checker. So when you go here, click on choose file. Make sure you check the file that you have on your flash drive but go over to PS3, update, PS3 update, and give it a few seconds while it checks. Once it generates a file checksum, paste in here to compare with and click compare. And if you get a green check mark, that means that you have downloaded and copied over a proper file. If the MD5 for this does not match, I recommend deleting the update off your flash drive and re-download it from the same place I showed you extract it and check it again. However, now that we have our homebrew and our update sitting on the flash drive, I'm just going to right click, eject, and transfer your flash drive over to your PS3. Now back at the PS3, there's going to be a few things we need to do. First of all, I do recommend this is going to be for later, but go over to your system settings, go down to display what's new, and I recommend turning this off. That way, when you reboot your system, it will reboot you directly over to your game icon as opposed to the PlayStation Network home screen here. That just makes opening up HIN a lot easier and faster. Now with that setting disabled, we are going to need to install this firmware twice. That is what is recommended. So this is if you're on 4.85 or if you're on a lower firmware than 4.85. Even for me, even though I'm on 4.85 right now, I will be installing this firmware twice on the system. So what you need to do is you need to go over to your settings, system update, make sure you have your flash drive plugged in, go down to update via storage media, and it should show 4.85 HFW. Press OK. And once the terms of service come up here, the user agreement, make sure you agree to that. Go down to start and let this copy over to your system. In a few seconds, your system should reboot and begin updating. So from here, you can go through the regular update process. However, as you can see, I am getting this error showing that I'm on the latest version of the system software, so there's no need to update. And that's fine if you get this. If you update through the XMB, that's fine. If you cannot update through there, I'm going to show you the second method of updating. So for this, I'm just going to press the PlayStation button and then press back. So if you were able to update using that method, fantastic. If you could not update, you are going to need to use recovery mode. So you're either going to need to use recovery mode to flash once or flash both times. It's not going to hurt either way as long as you flash this firmware twice to your system. So I'm going to demonstrate for you all how to get into recovery mode, but to do this, we'll need to turn off the system, make sure you have your controller wired into your system, and then from there, we need to hold down the power button and keep it held down until the system turns off. And then hold down the power button again and only release it when you hear two short beeps. I'm going to show it on screen as well so you all will see how to get into recovery mode. But go ahead, turn off your console 
and then boot into recovery mode. Once you're in recovery mode, it's telling you to connect a USB cable to your controller and press the PlayStation button. So I've already done that. Now you can go down to the sixth option, which is system update. Press the X button on there and hold down the start and select buttons while you have your flash drive with 4.85 HFW on there. It's now going to check for that update file and flash it through recovery mode. Once your system reboots, it's going to show this here that it's trying to install HFW. So press the PlayStation button again. It will check for your update data. And now you can go ahead, agree to the terms, and now just let this install HFW and reboot once more. Once your system reboots, you are going to have to reinitialize your resolution settings. But once you do, you should be able to boot up just fine. Now, 4.85 HFW is going to look and act the exact same as regular 4.85. So if you're freaking out that nothing has changed, don't worry. As long as you've installed this with no errors showing up, you're on 4.85 HFW. However, we do want to install this twice. So I'm going to turn off the system, boot into recovery mode yet again, and install it a second time just to be sure. For our second time again, just like the first, at least for me, system update, select and start, and let it copy over that firmware update to the system. And again here, just pressing the PlayStation button, it's checking for the update data, and we can install this a second time on our system. Again, this is super important to install twice, simply because the first time you do it, it might not fully update everything that it needs to, to successfully run your exploit. So to guarantee the greatest chance of success, you will need to install this twice. Just take the extra five minutes to do it. So again, we just had to reset the resolution a second time, but now at this point, again, since HFW has been installed twice, we are ready to go. That is about the hardest part of this tutorial. <laughs> so now at this point, we can go about actually installing PS3 HIN. And again, you can do this from a HAN-enabled PS3 if you have a completely stock PS3 like this one here, where when I started everything up, it was just on stock 4.85 HFW. You cannot do this on custom firmware. You have to be on 4.85 HFW. One other recommendation for this before you go and install HIN is to also activate your system. This way you can make use of tools such as the on-the-fly licensing on here if you're installing game package files. So for this, you can just press sign in under PlayStation Network, sign into your account. It would be recommended to utilize a account that might just be like a throwaway or something here. And then go into account management, go down to system activation, PS3 system, game, activate. And once your system is activated, you are all good to go. So you can continue with installing HIN. So next up, we can go to the internet browser, press the X button. So now that all this has run, I'm just going to cancel out of this. And to bring this up, you can press the triangle button, but you can go to your tools, go to confirm browser close and turn that off. You will need it to make sure that HIN installs properly. Once that is off, press the start button, remove all of this in the address bar, and the website we need to go to is ps3exploit.com. This is the exact same site that we got the download from. And again, that is exploit without an E. So once you have that, press the start button. And here are the messages, of course, the same ones we saw. We are already on 4.85 HFW, and we know not to enter factory service mode or install CCAPI on here. So with all of that done, I recommend pressing the select button and adding this to your bookmarks just in case. So for a few final tweaks, I recommend press the triangle button, go to tools for homepage, use the current PS3 exploit site as your homepage, press OK, go back to tools. And what we're going to do is delete our cookies. 
our search history, our cache, and the last thing we can delete, we don't even need to, but the authentication information, and press the circle button. And as you can see, when you press it, it does not prompt you to close out the browser. So now with all that done, we can begin to set this up. So open up your browser yet again. It should automatically default to the PS3 exploit webpage. So now we need to install PS3 HIN. So there's a couple methods of doing this, and they're about the same if we're doing it this way here. But you need to go over to the top left corner here, where it says PS3 HIN, and you could use either HIN Installer or HIN Installer Alternative. Now, HIN Installer, the regular one, this is pretty much just supposed to automatically do everything for you, from what I understand. I have tried it a few times and I have never gotten it to work. I'm just being honest here. You might have success with it, I have not. So I'm going to use the HIN installer alternative, which is still quite easy to use. It just requires you to go into remote play, but let's go ahead and use this. So just press X on whichever HIN installer you're using. I'm going to use alternative. And here, wait for it to finish initializing. Now, if it at all fails or locks up or something, restart your system, go back to this page and try again. But while it is trying to initialize, just let it do its thing. Again, if it fails, restart your system and try again. Now at this point, if you see how to install HIN, that means that this has been successful. So all we need to do is follow along with the instructions on here. So I'm going to press the circle button to close out of here. Now we need to go up to remote play and open it. Once you're in remote play, press the back button to exit out. And once you get back here, check this out. You now have install HIN. So press the X button. It's going to bring up this install option. So you can press X again and download this file. Once the install is complete, go back and now restart your system completely. Now, once your system reboots, check this out. We have this enable hand option and we have the package manager option. So I'll go ahead and show you all how everything works. First of all, whenever you reboot your system, every single time you do a full reboot of your system in order to run any homebrew and even some games that you might want to play that you install afterwards, you will need to run HIN. So just make a habit of opening up HIN every single time you turn on your PS3. So when you turn on your PS3, press the X button on enable HIN. It should bring up this cool looking animation here within your browser. And the nice thing is, if it enables successfully, that's about it, it'll exit out. If it is not successful, it will tell you it's rebooting, and it will reboot your entire system, and then you can try it again. Oh, just like right now. So with our system rebooted, let's go ahead and try this again. So again, just press the X button on Enable HIN. And as you can see, it should say, welcome to PS3 HIN, and it should show you the version that you're on as well as the latest version. And that is it, you are enabled. PS3 HIN is now enabled as until you turn off your system. So there's a few things that we can do. First of all, we can go down to package manager, go to install package files, standard, and this is the multi-man I had you all download before. So just press the X button on here, and it will install it directly to the system. And if you followed along with this tutorial to the T, then this should be your very first piece of homebrew on your system. So if we go back, we now have Multiman available. So now with Multiman being installed, let's go ahead and launch this. Now, once you've agreed to all the terms and let it initialize for the first time, first thing I recommend you all do is go over to your settings. And what is the one we're looking for? We are looking for music done this so many times that I still don't have this memorized, but theme audio, I recommend disabling that just because the background music can get annoying after a while. 
Plus, I've noticed performance if your FTPing and such seems to increase when it's not constantly streaming the music. But this is a game loader for here, so if you want to play any type of retro titles, PS1, PS2, PS3 games through here, it works out well enough. I do have a tutorial showing how to dump and play PS3 games through Multiman, so if you want to check that out, feel free to. Uh, but for the time being, let's go ahead and exit out of Multiman. If the name changes to MMCM, that is totally normal. So for your homebrew, not all homebrew is going to work, most of it will. There are a few things you should not do, such as factory service mode, and CC API. Those are not recommended at all. For any homebrew that might not be working, it would be recommended to try re-signing it to see if that helps. However, with my experience with Hen, the best homebrew that you can generally find is the stuff that has been specifically rebuilt for Hen. So it will mention Hen in the title or somewhere where it was compiled. For example, like with Multiman here. Uh, I haven't really had any issues with the regular 4.82 Multiman. However, there have been other reported issues, so that's why I recommended getting the unofficial 4.84 Hen version of Multiman. For any other stuff that you can do on your system here, you can go over to the network area, and you have a couple other things here, one of them being PS3 Exploit Home. So even though we set it by default in our browser, if you want to change that, you can change that there, and then you can just select this option to always take you to the PS3 Exploit Home. Let's exit out of that. We can also go over to Hybrid Firmware Tools, and from here, restart the PS3, you got some in-game settings, few dumping tools if you want to check these out, some more service tools, changing out themes, and this is cool, the PS3 HIN updater. So now, this won't update your firmware, but if you ever want to update your PS3 HIN, because HIN does get updated regularly, you can simply go to Hybrid Firmware Tools, PS3 HIN updater, and then update PS3 HIN. And that's about all you need to do, so it's super easy to do that. Speaking of firmware updates, do not update your firmware on here. There's been many people who updated immediately to 4.85 and they lost their hand, hand, custom firmware, what have you. You must know that right now, if you update your firmware, you are going to lose your hand capabilities. So if you want to keep them, just don't update. And whenever a firmware update does come out, please just don't immediately update to it. Do not update your system. Take it offline if you have to. And make sure you check some of the common resources such as PS3 Exploit and PSX Place to see what they have to say about the updates. These are constantly getting supported, so you might just have to wait a few hours, a few days, maybe even a few weeks, but you can be up and running with a modified latest firmware whenever a new update is pushed out for the PS3. Now one of the last things I'm going to cover is this generic error. What if you start up your system, you go down to any type of homebrew, and when you launch it, you get this error. Well, this is very simple to fix. If you get the 800-117 error, that means that you have not launched HIN. So therefore, if HIN is not enabled, you can't run any homebrew. So all you need to do is go back, go up to enable HIN, and launch this. Again, as I said, try and get into the habit if you are using your PS3 and you're using your homebrew applications regularly, just get into the habit of booting up and enabling HIN as soon as you turn on your PS3. So now that that's all been enabled, I can also show you a game launching as well too. Now this is not a tutorial for Multiman by any means, I have already done that, I'm just more showing this to you as a demonstration. I have Painkiller Hell and Damnation copied over to my USB drive, so all I can do for this is press the X button and wait. And as you can see, if I come up here now, Painkiller Hell and Damnation gets mounted as a regular game, so I can just launch that. Alright, so as you can see, this game is launching with no issues, and this was booted up through Multiman, and right now it is running off of my USB flash drive. So, that is just a nice demonstration, well, quick little demonstration of what you can do. But again, I'd recommend checking out some of the other homebrew. Again, you have access to homebrew applications, emulators, game launchers such as this, just so much more that you can use on here. It's really not like hand where it's only limited to game playing. You have quite a bit of the options that you would probably want to do with custom firmware now available to you. Now that we're at the end of this tutorial, hopefully this video has helped out quite a bit. I also want to give my big thanks to the entire PS3 exploit team, including Juni. Juni, who had worked on the 
HFW here, getting it ported in record time for 4.85 compatibility. And of course, as I said, the PS3 exploit team for their nonstop awesome work since 4.81 and 4.82. Their solutions, in my opinion, have been absolutely phenomenal. And seeing people go from saying the PS3 Super Slim will never be able to run anything to running IDPS dumpers to running Han and now Hen is excellent. Now for some of the other stuff you can check out on PS3 Hen, again I really recommend checking out some of the homebrew applications, emulators, just things like that that are really awesome and now available to you assuming that you did not have custom firmware available before. On top of that, there's also right here, as I talked about, the on-the-fly licensing. So if you have a package file and a license with it, you can just install them and then run the game. And as long as your license file is on a flash drive in a specific folder, it'll license right there, which is what the activation previously was for. Either way, though, it is really nice having that, and that's another tutorial I have covered on the channel. So there's a lot of really awesome quality of life fixes and such that are now available, but also baked into PS3 Hen. Anyways, that's about it for this video, so hopefully this did help you out. This is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you've enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated, and if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too.